In many ways, Treme is considered the cultural core of New Orleans. As the oldest African-American neighborhood in America, it's been the site of important events that have shaped the course of black history over the past 200 years. But waves of crime and years of economic neglect are threatening the cultural foundations of this historic neighborhood. Now, locals must unite and fight yet again to preserve their neighborhood's identity for future generations. We have the worst outcomes in the city, the worst social economic outcomes, the greatest disparities, the most people living below the federal poverty line, the worst health outcomes, the least access to jobs and transportation, um, and really, tragically, a 25-year difference in life expectancy than in our city's wealthier and whiter neighborhoods. The construction of the I-10 Expressway in the late 1960s shut down over 300 African-American-owned businesses along Claiborne Avenue in one fell swoop. It broke the community by obliterating its most vibrant commercial district. To add insult to injury, the corridor was once lined with the longest span of oak trees in North America. This is where the Cultural Innovation District comes in. At its helm is Asali, who is leading a massive project to revitalize this 25-block stretch. In America, also in Europe, yep. they're tearing down these monsters from the yes. 60s and 70s. Any discussion about it here in, in New Orleans? Well, actually, that was kind of the big, sexy discussion around our work. But when we talk to residents about this over the course of a couple of years, right, thousands of residents, focus groups, what we learned is that about 50% said, you know, it's the worst thing that ever happened to our community. It should absolutely come down. And then the other 50% said, you know, it's been here our whole life. This is where we have our second lines. The bands sound really good under here. And what we know is that when um, these things come down, we get displaced, right? Uh -huh. So that was around generational lines, pretty much. People who remember what it was like, those who didn't. But 100% said, we want economic opportunity. We want housing affordability, we want cultural preservation, we want environmental sustainability and transportation choice and access. So we decided to work on what 100% of people wanted. This is way more than a cute park with a couple of food trucks thrown in for good measure. The plan is big. We're talking green spaces, performance areas, playgrounds, water management reservoirs, a community center, a public market, bike lanes, a skills and learning campus, and even a skate park. The goal? To boost commerce under the expressway and hopefully in the surrounding neighborhoods by osmosis. More business means more jobs and more opportunities for local entrepreneurs to thrive once again. This is a major project, and of course, it needs major funds in order to be carried out. Through philanthropy and government grants, they've managed to raise a portion of the $26 million needed. And you can be sure that Asali and the people here won't stop until they realize their vision. This is a um, set of businesses we're really excited about, part of the redevelopment of the street. Um, an African-American um, developer and business owner, she's starting a coffee shop, Cafe Addiction, that actually was in the French Quarter, and she's brought it to Claiborne, a barbecue shop, and the Oyster Shack right there. Okay. Um, and she also acquired this um, old theater here on the corner. It's called the Claiborne. Uh -huh. And it was the first theater where African-Americans were able to um, go into the front door. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Wow. So we're still living with some of that history, right? Yeah. When we first started doing this work, we had to combat a lot of, um, you know, not so great activity um, that uh -huh. was happening. And for a while, it was just a dump site. People would dump stuff. Um, a lot of houseless encampments. Yeah. So, you know, one of our first things was just about cleaning it up and, um, you know, making it more. I mean, there's a lady right now walking with a baby. You wouldn't see that um, before we started oh, cleaning oh, up. Oh, yeah, over there, um, like family there? Yeah, yeah, you know, so just, um, you know, making it more hospitable for commerce and, um, you know, just doing something for these businesses that have struggled for so long. So tell me about the demographic of this neighborhood. What is it like now? So um, Claiborne Corridor neighborhoods are still about 84% um, African-American. $18,000 is the median household income, which is horrendous. How would this project contribute 
to this issue? Well, with the um, access to entrepreneurship, you know, being able to start businesses. And I mean, one of the projects that we're actually working with and seeding now is a Black Mask and Indian co-op, where they can actually figure out a way to commercialize their product. And so, whereas, you know, you usually only see Mardi Gras Indian beading, you know, um, on the times when they come out, now they'll be making fine art products that they can sell all over the world. Right, and okay. it could be a business that will support them and their children and grandchildren. And so part of our goal um, with the Cultural Innovation District is actually to um, use culture as an economic driver. How do we innovate our own culture um, so that we're able to benefit from it um, at least equally?